Um, just a bit of site news. Um, we did have our midterm review and it went really well. Um, and also I'm part of the Institute of Native American Studies here at the University of Georgia. Um, and we're working together with our tribal partners to create a land acknowledgement, which can also be used by the GCE. Um, so I'm, I'm an anthropologist, archeologist, so I'm a, a bit of a oddity in the LTR network, but I, I work with this fabulous group of uh, marine scientists and ecologists and, and modelers and things like that, and really learned a lot from them. And in, in turn, what they've allowed me to do is integrate a, a deeper uh, historical view of uh, socio-ecological systems um, for the network. And one of the things that we've been trying to do is integrate all these things into sort of a larger conceptual framework and in, into successive nested frameworks. And um, what you see here is sort of an example of, of one of those frameworks where we think about external drivers and internal drivers and domain perturbations the biophysical template and responses. Um, and so that's sort of framing a lot of what we do, particularly on the human legacies end of it, is trying to marry these paleo archives, uh, the archeological work, and then linking it up with the more recent last 50 years or so uh, of uh, ecological research in, in the domain. So I'm just gonna give you a, a couple of interwoven um, uh, uh, studies that's been going on. One of this has been done by uh, my former graduate students, now a postdoc at the University of Kentucky. And she has developed one of these long-term paleo archives in terms of gender chronology. And here we have almost uh, you know, around 5,000 years tree ring history from right next to our site. Um, these trees actually incidentally were observed by Charles Lyell uh, in the 1800s, these buried trees. So what we've done is taken that paleo archive and, and long-term climate record and sort of married it with the archeological record. One of the things we see from the very first initial occupation by Native Americans uh, in the region who developed the first sedentary villages, they're dealing with a, a, a series of different environmental challenges to which they overcome in terms of uh, utilizing the fishery, uh, managing it, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and what you see here are basically some uh, isotope data and radiocarbon dates from one of these early village sites. They do uh, have experienced this pretty extreme climate perturbation around 3,800 years BP, and there's a, a bit of a, a reorganizational landscape. But one of the things that we see throughout the, the region from 5,000 years ago is that communities in these systems are highly resilient and highly uh, uh, flexible in terms of their resources, and they develop really complex ways. Um, one of the examples of that is looking at this oyster reef management, which probably dates back about 4,000 years. One of the things we've done here is we've looked at and extended beyond the range of the GCE itself and looked at sites up and down the coast. Um, about 37,000 oysters were measured from 12 sites all the way up to 500 years ago. And what we looked at is oyster valve length um, and its relationship to oyster reefs is mapped in the 1800s. And one of the things that we saw is that oyster size actually varies latitudinally. Um, so different reefs were different, had different productivity over time. Uh, but in general, uh, these reefs sustained ex, uh, harvesting over 5,000 years. That is up until the 19th and 20th century um, when they experienced massive declines um, due to uh, intensive industrialized oyster canning. Um, and so in 1977, these same reefs that have been productive for so long uh, experienced 86 percent decline. And then uh, by 2018, there's only 8% of these beds uh, that were observed in the 1880s that have live oysters. Um, so what's really next? And, and so, you know, these are very, very brief overviews of uh, a few detailed studies. But one of the things is when we look at the GCE site is there are these complicated intertwined histories that start with uh, Native American occupation of the island, moving all the way through uh, initial colonization by um, the Spanish 
and then into the plantation period that all have these longer term effects when we think about um, different running different experiments as well as different restoration um, efforts. And so these, these data, I think, can be married quite well in, in thinking about efforts towards restoration and sustainability in the future. And so one of the things is to the next step is to really tease apart these histories and what are the common variables and common information that allows us to better think towards the future.